want to install a mod chip? Well, the good news is, is the Xeno GC mod chip is pretty easy to install. Uh, and like anything else, it just takes a little bit of time and having the right tools. If you find this video helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. So let's go ahead and get our 4.5 millimeter game bit together. Let's unscrew the bottom. Let's use our Phillips head screwdriver to take apart the rest of the screws. And let's tear this console apart. The one thing to take note of is to be careful with the tabs on both the controller port and on the rear panel, just so you don't break them. All right, now that the rest of the uh, console has been disassembled, we're going to focus our attention on the DVD drive because that's where the rest of the action is going to be happening. So I'm going to show you guys two ways to do this mod. Uh, call one the advanced way and one the more simplistic way. Uh, both methods, though, start with doing some flux and, you know, fluxing the area that, or the six solder points that we need to hit. So I'm going to go ahead and put up a diagram right now so you guys can see uh, the exact solder points you need to hit. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and add your flux to it and you want to add some fresh solder to each of those points. Now three of those points are just exposed copper currently. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a little bit of solder on the tip of your iron and then you want to go ahead and bring your solder in and you don't want to touch it to the iron. You actually want to touch it to another point on the copper. And what you will see happen, uh, as you can kind of see here in this zoomed in video, is that the copper will absorb the solder from the actual solder, um, not the actual soldering iron itself. So once you're done, inspect your work. And uh, if you're me and you're doing a YouTube video, of course you have to make a mistake. And uh, you can see right there, I'm using a little bit of desolder braid to go ahead and remove uh, the solder from one of the, you know, one of the pads that, you know, shouldn't have been tinned and I tinned by accident. So now I'm going to go back over, I'm going to fix it, and we're all squared away. The proper pad is now tinned and I'm all set. So let's go ahead and get ready. We're going to start with the more advanced method before we do the easy method. <laughs> Okay, now that we've already done all the uh, board work and we've uh, cleaned all of our flux off, it's time to do some positioning uh, of the mod chip itself onto the actual DVD drive. So what you want to do is you want to take a look at that diagram again and you want to line up the six uh, quick solder points to those spots that we had previously propped. Um, you'll see me go ahead now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a little bit better look at this and I apologize it's a, it's a digital zoom but hopefully it'll kind of illustrate the point here. And what I'm going to do is I've tinned my um, my soldering iron a little bit here, and I'm just going to tack one point in place. Um, it's important to say that this is a tack. It's just meant to hold things in place. This is not my final solder joint. So, like I said, we're going to go ahead and tack one spot in place. Uh, to you know, hindsight being 2020, I probably picked one of the harder spots uh, to be completely honest. But um, nonetheless, at least you guys can kind of see what's going on here. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and add a whole bunch of flux. So this is um, no clean flux. It's different than the last flux I used. The last flux I used was like a solder paste, more or less, or a flux paste. I'm sorry. Um, the no clean is nice because, you, as the name implies, you don't actually have to clean anything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder in the rest of these points. The key here is to apply heat to both the actual um, quick solder pad on the mod chip and to the actual solder point at the same time and then feed your solder in and that should help you create a bond between both the board and between the mod chip itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do these for these uh, six points.
Okay, with the advanced method done, we're going to go ahead and try to show you the, call it the easier method or easier way to do it. Um, so I've rolled up a piece of electrical tape and I'm just sticking it to the back of the mod chip. So effectively what we're going to do here is we're just going to position the mod chip off to the side where there are no other components and there's plenty of space for it. And essentially what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and solder some of that 28 gauge wire from the mod chip to the solder points themselves. The reason why that this is, you know, easier so to speak is because if you're going to make a mistake or if you do make a mistake, it's really easy to correct your mistake. The problem when you're doing it the other way is if you make a mistake, you have to desolder the entire board and or a mod chip from the board and it can be tedious and painful. So this is just an easier way to do it. It takes a little bit more time to to be fair, but um, like I said, what you make up uh, what you lose in time and soldering it in you can make up if you make a mistake because making correcting any mistakes using this method is extremely uh, fast and easy so anyway you've seen me apply flux to the actual mod chip itself and what I've done is I've gone ahead and tinned up all of the solder points all the quick solder points and now what I'm doing is I'm taking my 28 gauge wire and I am soldering to the actual mod chip itself and usually the way I, this is just the way I do it out of habit um, because I know all the solder points so well uh, is I go ahead and solder all of the 28 gauge conductors on first and then I solder them to the actual points uh, on the DVD drive itself it might be easier if it's your first time through to just take it one step at a time solder one lead to the mod chip solder the other end to the actual point on the DVD drive using the uh, installation diagram that I have provided. The only thing to note here is off camera I've applied flux to um, all the points on the DVD board that I need to hit so you're not going to see me apply flux here but it's important to note that you should be adding flux to that because uh, it's going to make your life significantly easier. The other thing to note is you want to put the end, the stripped end of the conductor on top of the solder point and apply heat from the wire uh, from the exposed part of the wire onto the solder point itself as what that'll do is make it so you have a really nice bond and it should be well wetted to both the DVD board and to the 28 gauge wire. So let's get these points knocked out and we'll get on to the final part of the mod which is the pot tweak. Boom, got that mod chip installed, that's big. Time for the last part of this mod. The last part is called a pot tweak, which is also referred to as a potentiometer. And basically what this does is it adjusts the intensity of the laser on the DVD drive itself. So <clears throat> it's interesting actually, having done so many of these, the stock configuration from Nintendo varies wildly. I mean, some are as high as four or 500 uh, ohms of resistance on the potentiometer and others are as low as a you know 175 so kind of the sweet spot where I've noticed um, that I like to tweak mine to is somewhere between call it 75 and 150 ohms um, and that typically yields some of the best results for reading burned media so when you're measuring the pot on this thing um, <clears throat> there's two different legs one's in the bottom right hand corner uh, and the other one's at the very top left so as you can kind of see uh, me doing over here you can see me measuring those two points to go ahead and, and get the reading. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, move the potentiometer screw around a little bit till I get it just right. Uh, the other thing to note is this thing is incredibly sensitive and even tiny, tiny small turns adjust it a lot. So it's critical when you're doing this to make sure you're using a multimeter because if you're not, you risk just blindly turning this and not and basically making it so the DVD drive doesn't work. So make sure you have the right tools when you're doing this. Okay, time for my favorite part of all the mods, testing. So over here I've got uh, what's called a GameCube service disc or test disc. Um, this is, you know, obviously unreleased, but this is what actually Nintendo used to service all their GameCubes. So anyway, it's obviously a burn disc, so we're going to go ahead and try to read it, and yeah, it looks like we got a winner. This thing's uh, reading no problem. If you're like me and you're not putting the lid back on, there are two lid switches that you need to push down. 
So that's it guys. Like I said, overall not too bad of a mod to do at all. Uh, it's pretty easy. You just got to take your time and make sure that you're diligent to hit your solder points and make sure you're using flux and all the other uh, tools that I've kind of described throughout the process. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below, but otherwise please comment, like, and subscribe. Have a good one.